Holy Spirit. This morning's collect, that prayer that collects our thoughts as we begin worship, is one of my particular favorites throughout the church year. It's sometimes called the culinary collect because it begins, stir up thy power, O Lord, and with great might come among us. There's a tradition in some churches today that instead of the celebrant reading that collect, the congregation reads the collect. And we don't participate in that tradition here often, but this morning I'd like us to do something a little different. This morning I would like to begin the sermon and end the sermon with all of you reading the collect. However, I'm not going to read it with you. I'm only going to say the first few words. So that means it's up to you to convey all of the energy, the strength, the spiritual oomph of asking God to stir us up today. So, do you think we could try it? All right, we all found it. We've got the bulletins open. We're ready to go with great <coughs> them. Stir the power of the Lord, and with great might come among us. And because we are sorely hindered by our sins, let your bountiful grace and mercy speedily help and deliver us through Jesus. too far away, because in a few minutes, you're going to need it again. <clears throat> Stir up thy power. That's something that the early Christians certainly needed. Have we ever stopped and think about what was going on in, in Israel, really, in the time of Jesus, and how much greater the weight and the anxiety must have been by the time Jesus died and they actually wrote the Gospels, Jesus was born into a land occupied by an invading force, the Romans, that had taken over what the Israelites saw as God's chosen people. They were conquered. They were anxious. Jesus came as, as a Messiah to redeem the world and in the midst of that coming and in the midst of the proclamation that we're hearing from John the Baptist, there's a lot of anxiety being spoken about what it means to be a human being in sin. Where is redemption to come from? Where is grace to come from? There's going to be a judgment. There's a great deal of, of, of emphasis on judgment and end times in the early time. And, and why was that? What kicked it up, as Emeril Lagasse would say, since we're trying to do culinary metaphors here, what kicked up the anxiety of the early world? Well, we have to think about the fact that when the Gospels were written, not only was Rome an invading force, but there were terrible things happening. The temple was torn down, that great symbol of their faith was in ruins as these gospel stories are being recorded. We don't hear about that in the gospel itself, but we know historically that that happened during the times these gospels were being written. So in the midst of this great spiritual angst, we have the story of redemption recorded for us. I'm sure we have no spiritual angst anymore in our world. 
There is certainly no anxiety left to go around. It was all used up, thank goodness for that. Ha ha. I brought today a little display about our culinary gospel, about stirring things up, and some things that might need our particular attention as we do our stirring and ask God to stir. The first one is a liturgical calendar. And I always look forward to this particular calendar. Some of you who are really plugged into the liturgy of the church recognize it. Most of you probably don't. But it comes each year and it gives us the colors of the every day. It gives us those individuals to observe, especially on specific occasions. It marks out when Ash Wednesday is and when Easter is. And if you flip it up, it gives you on the back side all of the readings you're supposed to read. It demystifies the part of the prayer book for all of us who do liturgical planning at St. Mark's. And they arrived on Friday. And our office manager, Melanie, I think was was somewhat taken back and I, with great glee I opened the package and yes they're here and I ran off and I put one in the, the uh, sacristy for the altar guild and I ran over and put one into the flower guild room so the flower guild knows how to make those beautiful arrangements and then rushed off and put one in the vesting sacristy so the vergers could have one and we're going to give Bill Silver one to take home uh, to post in his and on his refrigerator I have one in my refrigerator one over my dresser and it's just it's a time to think about the potential and all that lies before us in a year in the life of the church. But that also brings anxiety because there are things to, to do. And those of us who lead liturgy have anxieties of, of pulling it all off once again, um, of going through this great cycle of the church. So we need prayers and help as we go about doing it, as we or an Advent and begin that, that new year, that new cycle. So we're going to take all the hopes and potential and anxiety of a year to come in the life of our parish, and we're going to put it in this pot. <laughs> for future stirring. Oh, well, we have something else. Oh, it's the L.L. Bean Catalog. Ooh, that must mean I have anxiety of what I'm going to get myself for Christmas. <laughs> Is it going to come from L.L. L. Bean? Oh, well, maybe I want something from the Smithsonian catalog instead. Oh, well, maybe I want something from Hemmler and Schlemmer. They're really cool stuff. It looks like they have an 80-foot snowball launching machine. <laughs> That could be good for a youth group challenge with Christopher and the teenagers. <laughs> well, I don't know what we'll do, but whatever anxiety I have over what I'm going to get myself for Christmas, I'm going to put in the pot, too. Can I just put that in the pot? But, oh, well, the Vermont Country Store. Oh, that means I have anxiety about what to get my mother for Christmas. <laughs> The only thing I can take consolation from is the fact that if I don't order something from this Vermont Country Store catalog, in about three days I'll get another one to choose from. <laughs> <coughs> We're going to put this and mother things in the pot. All right, what's that? Oh, the Orvis catalog, the dog book. Guaranteed delivery order by December 20th. Well, I better keep this out of my dog Tavish's sight because I'm sure she'll have a couple ideas of what she wants for Christmas. And if I uh, don't order what she wants, she usually chews up the catalog. So we're going to put this in the pot, too. <laughs> All right. What's next? Oh. Oh. Oh, person of the year, Donald Trump, 45th president of the United States. Oh, no cause for anxiety there. <laughs> Put that in the pot. 
Now we're going to take our pot here and uh, we're going to add a little bit of, of pepper, which keeps the, the heat on. We always have to keep our own feet to the fire, don't we as Christians? Just a little bit. And then uh, a little bit of salt to amplify the flavor. I like to think salt is all of us coming together as a community are always more powerful and better than we are individually. So a little bit of salt in here for unity. And now we are going to take our pot and we're going to stir it up. And in closing, I'm going to invite you all to return to the collect with as much vim and vigor. And as we move into our year together, I'll do the stirring, you do the reading. Are we ready? Stir up your power.